Hello, everybody. Hope you've had a marvellous Christmas, Hanukkah, holiday week. It's been great for us. We have done a couple of incredible giveaways. And of course, if you didn't already get it on the 25th, this Wednesday, please download the free course from Mr. Stevie Black. It's absolutely 100% free. And it is Stevie taking us through the process of writing and recording a string arrangement. So please download it. I'm sure there's links all over the place. So let's get started on the holiday season, Fact Friday and giveaway. I hope you've had a marvelous holiday week. It's been a lot of fun here. And of course, we've had a couple of wonderful giveaways this week. We gave away the Arroyo R10, which is my personal microphone, which you can win. Also, another one of my personal microphones and favorites is the Lewitt 640TS, both incredible mics, which you can enter to win. And you can get the Stevie Black course for free. It's a free gift. Just sign up down below to get that. And we're gonna do another giveaway. It's a big holiday week. All right, let's get started with a question. I've been recording and I've been listening to things I made recently over and over. I don't know if this is just me or you as well. The more I listen to my music, the more I find bad things to pick up on or hear things that are just not right. I get trapped in this loop of this and never seem to be able to finish a project because I keep messing with it. How do you get out of this perfectionist mindset or how do you combat it and leave it be? Every single person I've ever worked with who I value their opinion has that feeling. My dear old friend, Brian Karlstrom, God rest his soul, said that after he finished the Dirt album with Dave Jordan, that's Alison Chain's Dirt, he went into a spiraling depression after it was finished because he kept listening to the mixes and just found fault after fault after fault. Now he did that with Dave, they mixed it together, but Brian also engineered it. And all he said he could hear was just a never ending series of issues. And that album, as I'm sure you're very aware, is an incredible sounding record and went off and sold bazillions of copies and continues to to this day because it's freaking awesome. It is an amazing record capturing some incredible performances. Next time you put on Rooster, you'll hear exactly what I mean. But Brian told me he never got over it. Every time he would listen to that record, all he would hear is faults. Everybody I know and everybody I value thinks that way. There are people that think that they're a genius and the sound of like hip music and all this kind of stuff, but artists have self-doubt and that is okay. If you're an artist, whether you're a producer, engineer, mixer, whatever it is, or you're a, a songwriter, a musician, whatever it might be, you're an artist at heart. You really are an artist and having self doubt is what drives everybody to get better. If you're at a place where you think you know it all and you're running around being so self-confident in everything you do, then you're not growing. So what your question just said to me is that you are growing and you are tinkering and you're trying to improve and that is okay. Now, there's another side to that question, which is probably the other one that you're really trying to get to. Is like, when do you, when do you let go? Well, the reality is, is like you have to set yourself your own boundaries. So if you're busy working on multiple projects, you've got to be able to say to yourself, I've got to finish this on Friday because Saturday I have a girl coming in to do a vocal on a different project. So you have to set yourself some boundaries. And that is the only way I can move from one thing to another or else I will tinker and tweak everything incessantly. Creating something at a consistently high quality is far more important than perfectionism. Perfectionism in itself is actually, I believe, a fault because your idea of perfect might actually stop something from ever coming out and might be so narrow that other people don't understand it. I've worked with many artists that get into this level of perfectionism. I can think of somebody off the top of my head who is still making the same album and has cut drums and guitars and basses and vocals with numerous amounts of people and is continually finding faults in the work. Faults that they don't necessarily hear but then somebody else decides it's a fault and informs them and then they obsess over it. I've been through all of these things and I have been guilty of all of them too. The reality is, is we are human. We are organic living mammals, animals. And so things 
will be wrong. There will be things. There'll be noises in the mouth. There'll be squeaks on the guitars. There'll be like drums inconsistently hitting. But we get we get to a place where we get get it so it sounds real and human, but just has enough polish on it to be commercially viable. When you go too far and you take out every buzz and every click and every slightly detuned whatever, you'll just end up with something that sounds like it's completely virtual and lifeless and has no humanity left, which maybe, you know, if you're in that genre that wants to do that, that's great, but there's very, very few genres like that. It may be a brief that somebody gives you to do something super, super perfect, but the reality is, is we respond as human beings to humanity, to things that seem a little wrong. We don't know that they're wrong, but we identify with them. And I think the best way to think about that is a vocal. A great vocal has emotion in it. And emotion is can be frailty, it can be power, it can be a combination of those things. It can be a vulnerability in a vocal where you feel like, oh, I need to help this person. You know, all of these things from power and anger to happiness to sadness to vulnerability to all of those things are wonderful examples of imperfections. Otherwise, the vocal would be very in time and very in tune and very perfect and soulless and nothing for us to latch onto, nothing for us to, as human beings, to hear. Don't worry if your music has imperfections, because those imperfections are what we as human beings gravitate towards. But a marvelous question, and you are not alone. I'm sure everybody here has had that experience. So please, this is a great talking point. What, what do you do to set boundaries to allow yourself to say something is finished and accept that it will never be perfect, and if it was perfect, it would be soulless? How do you stop yourself from getting to that place? So please give us some examples below and let us know your process. I'd love to know, and I'm sure everybody in the community would love to share it. Okay, so let's talk about our giveaway. The fine fellows at Cali have come up with this. It is the Mountain View Bluetooth input module. The reason for the Mountain View thing, because I would ask him about this, all of their products uh, are about California. Cali, California with a K. The LP is the Lone Pine. This is the Mountain View. That's where all these names come from. So rather lovely. What is unique about this, the Mountain View? Well, let's open it up and give it a look. There's some nice, simple instructions here. But keep it simple is good for guys like me. And here is the unit. It is a Bluetooth input module. So I can sync this to my cell phone, iPhone, Android, laptop, whatever you want to do. You sync it by pressing this button down, which is where these very simple instructions come from. And it has outputs of XLR balanced or TRS balanced. There's a power input there, obviously. And also you can put in a mini jack 3.5, which is actually gonna be quite useful for us because we have a system at the moment where we take our laptops and plug them into the console. So what I can do is I can put this in the chain. So I can take this out, plug this into the console. Eric can put his laptop in if he's sitting over there. I can just play music from my computer from over there or my cell phone or whatever it is. So nifty little device, doesn't weigh too much, but it feels pretty substantial. Has a volume control, which is stepped, which is always nice. Let us hook it up and try it out. Okay, so let's pair this. Here we have my phone and we have the Cali. So according to the uh, instructions, you press the button. I love how it's written, as my friend would say, in Disney. So you just press the button here and then you go to settings on your phone under Bluetooth and it should show up. So here we go, we're gonna try it. So we're gonna press it. Connected, yes, okay. It says it's connected. Spotify, uh, let's go for some Mozart. There we go, it works. Nice volume control here.
obviously in the volumes working on the phone as well. I'm not sure it was with Spotify and the new cartoon version of <laughs> Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Am I, am I missing something else? How, is it because it's Christmas or something? <laughs> it's rather strange. Anyway, thank you, Callie. Really straightforward. Does the job. I think what, what we're going to like about this is we can leave this up all the time. We can leave it on the console. Maybe we'll put it here and we'll have that 3.5 millimeter input there so we can just plug in the laptop. It means that for Eric, he can just like run a quick cable in there. So here it is. It's here to stay. Great device. Thank you ever so much. Enter to win one of three of these. Please enter. There'll be a link below. Can you think of any possible benefits of listening to more than one pair of monitors at the same time? Not really, unless they're in different rooms. I think if I had all of these three monitors here, we've got the Focals, the Genelex, and the Callies. Uh, we've talked about many times before, I can reiterate, the reason why I have three sets of monitors is to fulfill three completely different needs. The Genelec 1032s, I have been mixing, recording on since blah, 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 1990 something, have been a staple of mine for many, many years. And when I moved to LA in particular, they were in every studio. Every studio probably still has a pair. The Callies we have because it's a real world speaker. And we like to monitor on these because they're $300 a pair. And it speaks to a lot of people in our audience of what they can afford and what they can use. And to be honest, I like having them up there to pretty much say in their price range at $300, I don't know if there's anything better for a pair of powered speakers. The Focals are amazing speakers as well. We love the Focals. They have so much front to back depth. It is ridiculous how good they sound. And the other thing about them is they are super, super powerful. They're amazing for us because when we have clients sitting back there on the couch, like Eric is presently doing, taking a nap, Oh, he's not. <laughs> when we had them sitting back there, we can blow them away with sheer volume, but not just volume, but with detail and everything. I mean, they are second to none when it comes to like fulfilling many, many needs. And that little speaker there is actually switchable. You can turn it on so it's only playing that without the subwoofer. And it really gives you a feeling of what it's like to have a pair of NS10. So they're a sort of everything speaker. They do everything for us. So all of these different things. But would I turn all three on at once? Heck no. I wouldn't because there are going to be all kinds of phase issues. The way we have it positioned at the moment from the listening position, if I'm sitting upright with the tweeters hitting my ears on the Genelex, sitting about here, it sounds phenomenal. The Focals, the perfect listening position is probably about here. I'm all out of focus and emanating in this sort of area here where people are sitting. Because normally when there's no camera there, there's people sitting there. So the reality is, is like if all three of those were going, there'd be all kinds of phase issues with a tweeter here, tweeter there, tweeter. It doesn't really make any sense to have all three playing unless you just kind of wanted a big loud sound. The only time I could think of ever playing multiple speakers are number one, obvious one is turning a sub on and off with any of those speakers. Would, I don't really need a sub on either the Focal Trios or the Genelec 1032s. It's, it's the Callies I might put the sub on. The only other time then would be, frankly, is if I've got three sets of speakers in different rooms. That's really the only answer I can give, is if you wanted to have like another pair of Genelex or something in the live room because you wanted to work in there or you wanted to play it back to the musicians if they were sitting out there. You know, there's those kinds of reasons. If you want to play music in lots of different rooms so you can walk around your studio space or your house or wherever you're working, I get it. You might want to hear it in different environments, but really the idea of playing all three at once doesn't make any sense to me because there'd be all kinds of phase issues. You'd be moving your head around, getting hit from different tweeters at different times and get different null points. I mean, you know, it would just be a case of volume, but not clarity. Um, if that's what you wanted, great, but I can't see personally any real need for that. But it's a good question and I like being able to answer it. Don't forget to enter to win the lovely Cali Mountain View, modeled here. Also, you can get the free gift of the Stevie Black Strings. It's gonna be up forever. So come back next week and download them, but 
They're going to be there. It's a free gift to everybody in our community. Thank you, Stevie, for letting us do that. And have a marvellous time. I really hope you enjoyed this holiday season. There's more to come. If you're watching this on the day it came out, there's still a couple of days, of course, to go to the new year. And there'll be more coming in the new year. Thank you ever so much for watching. Have a marvellous time recording and mixing. Please go to producelikeapro.com, sign up for the email list. We'll send you more free goodies and gifts and all that kind of wonderful stuff. Thank you for being an incredible community. And we'll see you all again very soon.